Joining me on Culture Wars is Rowan Dean, Trump watcher, editor of The Spectator, Australian host of Outsiders and Sky News every Sunday at 9am. Rowan, great to see you. <clears throat> it takes Sir Trump once again to call out something indefensible um, that many other leaders uh, around the world, many politicians, won't tackle, including leaders of European countries, who are also letting in waves of illegal immigrants cross their borders, land on their beaches. Now, like I said, journalists they, they might hate how Trump discusses this, but the greatest sin is by politicians who ignore this issue. Um, Andrew, yes, uh, I would actually take uh, issue with your claim that he's exaggerating. Uh, the number 15 million is merely an extrapolation uh, from the 10 million who they know about uh, and includes those that the Americans don't know about who cross over the border undetected at night or uh, over places where they can easily get through. So there is every chance that it's not an exaggeration. But regardless, the point is that the numbers are simply staggering and the proof of that is not the numbers themselves, but the impact this is having on cities throughout America, families throughout America, small town USA. They are reeling at the fact that uh, this number of uh, illegal immigrants are coming in uh, and the effects that's having draining welfare, uh, school halls are being turned over to uh, house them, uh, services are being diverted to them. You've even had uh, left-wing mayors in places, uh, Democrat mayors in blue cities like uh, New York and elsewhere saying they simply cannot cope. So the numbers are out of control. There's a neat little irony here with what you were talking about before, Andrew, that, of course, if um, Donald Trump and Kevin Rudd do get to sit down together, perhaps Kevin Rudd can explain to uh, Donald Trump how he did exactly what Biden has done. He tore up John <laughs> Howard's successful Pacific solution and he threw open the borders and he too saw uh, his... his uh, uh, prime ministership go down in flames because of that stupidity. The reality is, uh, Andrew, as always, what appears to be exaggeration or hyperbole or anything else from Donald Trump tends to actually become the mainstream opinion within a short period of time. As you rightly pointed out throughout Europe, Europe is reeling under immigration. Uh, and the idea, the gag about Hannibal Lecter, etc., etc., well, we know here in Australia that the Albanese government has released... Uh, from detention, illegal immigrants who number amongst them rapists, murderers, uh, pedophiles. So really the, the Hannibal Lecter uh, tagline, amusing as it is, is not necessarily uh, incorrect. We also know that uh, uh, our own country is now seeing an increase in immigration. And all around the Western world, Andrew, it's the same story. Left-wing governments believe ideologically that there should be uh, more immigration, but more importantly, they believe that they get more votes out of higher immigration. So that's why they are unleashing this torrent of illegal immigration onto our shores and America's and Europe's. Yeah, it's hard to believe otherwise why Joe Biden virtually welcomed it and why his uh, chiefs are boasting about all the border controls that dismantled. I must say, in my 10 million uh, estimate, uh, based on official sources, it did include the getaways that uh, we're talking about, but 10 million, 15 right. million, the thing Good. is, okay. that yeah. is one awful, there's a whole country load of people come in three years illegally. I mean, it's just insane. But what else did you get out of the interview that we'll be screening tonight? Oh, it's a fantastic interview, Andrew, and it's a must-watch interview. Uh, apart from immigration, uh, he talks about the failures of Biden around the world, particularly as we've seen. Uh, what's great about the November 5th election is we literally get to compare the Trump administration years, the four years, with the Biden administration four years. That rarely happens in, in, in politics, and you then get to choose which way you want to go between them. Uh, we saw peace during Biden's, uh, uh, Trump's period of office. We've seen war during Biden's period of office. We saw uh, the Abraham Accords, a peace between Arabs and Israelis, uh, that nobody ever thought would happen, under, did happen under Trump and is now being trashed under Biden. We saw the rearming of Iran. They've now got uh, close to having nuclear weapons uh, with all sorts of devastating consequences. That had been completely halted under Trump. So we've got... Uh, he talks very clearly about... Uh, now, it's classic Trump, so he, he makes the claim, and we could say it's an exaggeration or not, but he does make the claim that under him there were no wars, under Biden there have been wars. He makes the claim 
that Ukraine would never have occurred and October 7th would never have occurred under his watch. I, for one, believe well, let him. Let me just play that, uh, Ron. Let arming me just the Iranians stop you for a with, I want to with play money, that very billions grab. and billions of dollars going to Iran. I, I want to play that very grab and, Sorry, and have you comment on it. I, I want to play that uh, because I've been worried by Trump's attraction to dictators like uh, Russia's Putin, China's Xi Jinping. Here's Trump trying to explain what's really going on with that and why he claims that he can just talk Putin into stopping the war in Ukraine. Not sure I believe it, but here's his explanation. Is Putin the kind of man we can negotiate with? Yeah, I think he is. Do you? So we did very well with him. Look, you know, uh, I'm the one that was the one. I stopped the pipeline, Nord Stream 2. People don't realize that. You know, they say, I'd like, I like Putin. I got along with Putin great. I got along with President Xi great. That's a good thing, not a bad thing. Putin responds to strength. I don't know. I, I don't know what he responds to. He responded to me. I can tell you one thing. He certainly wouldn't have gone into Ukraine. No way. And he didn't. You know, people say, well, how do you know that? Even Democrats say he wouldn't have gone if I were president. You wouldn't have Ukraine. You wouldn't have had Israel. The attack on October 7th would never have taken place. Iran was broke. They had no money. I said, anybody that buys oil from Iran can't do business in the United States. And Biden comes along and he lifted everything. Trump getting on with Putin and Xi is no bad thing, he says, is it? Uh, it isn't, Andrew, because it, look at what Trump does rather than what he actually says. And the reality was we had peace under Trump. We've had war under Biden. That's the bottom line. Look at what Donald Trump does rather than listening to every joke he makes or every exaggeration he may make. Scoreboard, scoreboard. Uh, Rowan Dean, thank you so much indeed for your time. <laughs>